welcome to the first episode of the Serpent's Tongue podcast. This podcast is going to act as an expansion pack to the Sacred Serpent YouTube channel. Until things get going with this podcast, it's going to be a relatively grassroots kind of approach, if you will, to podcasting. For instance, right now I'm in my kitchen recording this with my cell phone. I'm letting my dog into the house. You might hear, you know, you might hear the phone ring. I might have to answer the door. This is real life, folks. I don't have the luxury of having an office with a padded soundproof room and a bunch of expensive equipment, at least not yet. So without out of the way, let's dive right into it. You guys, welcome to the first episode again of the Serpent's Tongue podcast. We're going to talk about Kundalini. We're going to talk about the matrix. We're going to talk about nutrition and health and protocols on how to get healthy in this sick world. We're going to talk about detoxing both mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. We're going to talk about the assemblage point. We're going to go over books. We're going to review stuff. We're just going to have a heart to heart like we usually do on the YouTube channel, but in podcast form. We're going to talk about alchemy. We're going to talk about potion crafting. Gnosis, Christ consciousness, anatomy and physiology, how to break free from the herd, how to reconfigure your energetic field and reattain Gnostic consciousness. We've all been imprisoned within our mind and we do not know it, much like Morpheus tells Neo in the first Matrix film, in fact, throughout all of the Matrix films. We have been bred in a world that restricts and limits the power of your body and your mind. Most of us develop in this world and we never actually know that there's more to life than what we've been told, what we've been educated to think, what we've been educated to feel. There are secrets everywhere, ladies and gentlemen, around us. Life is a massive fucking mystery. Your human body is a mystery. The human breath is a mystery. This is an incredible experience. Life. We're going to talk about life on this podcast. We're going to talk about ways to enhance your life. To get more out of life. To shed the layers of the non-essential self so that you can experience a radical redeployment of your energy and experience life for everything that it's worth. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a system here that has been put into play that is raising humans to be limited versions of themselves. And in this limited state, you will only be accessing a tiny fraction of your potential. You will only be able to experience a small isolated section of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. This is indeed why we only use 1% to 3% of our brain power, our mind power. In essence, my YouTube channel and this podcast serves as a launch platform, a foundation that people can use to begin crawling out of the cultural pig pen that we've all been put in so that we can start to shatter the limitations that been, have been put on us so that we can start accessing more of our power. Accessing more of our power equates to becoming lucid within the dream, this dream of life. We become lucid be, by increasing awareness, by becoming more aware of the energetic truths of life. So there is an entire version of reality, ladies and gentlemen, that has been hidden from us by way of our perception and awareness being put into a state where we cannot see the energetic truths. We cannot feel them anymore. We've been energetically reconfigured. Let's go over ways on this podcast to reconfigure ourselves properly. We all have to slay parts of ourselves that have been molded by culture if we want to grow into our highest potential. We have to slay ritualistically 
or sacrifice the non-essential layers of ourselves so that we can rebuild ourselves. In order to do that, we have to know how to target and locate and discover the non-essential parts of ourselves. because most people have no clue that they even have non-essential parts of themselves that are burning up so much of their personal power. This exists within the mind, ladies and gentlemen. There's all sorts of shit happening in our mind that we're not aware of because we only use a small fraction of our brain power. There's all sorts of unconscious loops going on in your emotional field that are literally draining your energy by creating non-essential thoughts. There's so much chatter in your mind and just all this crazy shit. So we're going to talk about magic on this podcast because magic is how we go about locating these non-essential parts of our psyche so that we can rebuild ourselves. Magic is a foundational tool that we can use to rebuild ourselves from the ground up. I hope all this makes sense. We're going to talk about Kundalini, my most cherished, cherished subject on this podcast. Kundalini is what we were designed to experience on a day to day basis. Kundalini is enlightenment energy. Some people call this Gnosis or Nirvana, Christ consciousness, Uraeus. There are about a million different ways to describe this divine energy that lies within us. There's so many things I wish I could just say in a short amount of time. Unfortunately, I'm limited for time. But, folks, it's, it's, it's a little uh, foreign to me, to be honest, to record a podcast. I'm so used to making YouTube videos. It's, such, it's so second nature to me. It's so easy to just get on the camera and make these YouTube videos, but for some reason, starting something new, there's always some rusty gears in recording this podcast. It's a little uh, outside of the familiar waters for, uh, for me, so just bear with me as we get the ball rolling, so to speak, folks. So, you know, as we, as this thing starts to develop, this podcast, I'll eventually have guests on and I'll even create kind of a, uh, maybe like a, um, question and answers style platform for this podcast where subscribers and listeners can request certain subjects to be talked about. Questions can be answered, you name it. So yeah, you guys, we are, we're living in crazy times. If you're listening to this, there's a damn good chance that you know this. You know deep down that something's wrong in the world, that something's out of alignment. You can sense the evil. You can feel an imbalance in the force, if you want to call it that. My subscribers, my viewers, are more often than not very brilliant people. And I want to thank you directly for being here with me. Let's figure out the problems in this world and let's start by working on ourselves. Let's start by becoming radiantly healthy versions of ourselves that can act as lighthouses here for other people. Once you reach a certain state of health, folks, people will gravitate towards your energetic configuration and try to mimic it because they can sense something real within you, something deep something healthy, something that they wish to strive for. So we'll do, this is an introductory message for the podcast, but after this on like episode two, uh, two and so on from there on, excuse me, we'll have specific subjects that we'll go over directly and we'll spend a lot of time on these subjects, folks. I have no issue making two hour episodes, three to four hour episodes, you name it. So that's just the way it is. You guys, we've got a lot to talk about and not a lot of time. There's so much beauty to being alive. There's so much beauty to this divine reality that we live in. And sadly, so many of us never know it because we're never taught the right things. We were miseducated as we developed 
And we've gone over on my channel a million times how most of your deepest programming happens during your earliest developmental period. From ages one to about 10, you instruct your subconscious mind to literally create your reality in a very specific way based on how you're taught to think and feel. This happens largely in the education system as you develop. And as you witness or observe the reality that you live in as a baby, a lot of our most deepest beliefs and subconscious programs that we harbor that are non-beneficial were solidified and cemented when we were young, young children, when we were in our infant stages. Simply by observing your peers and observing the mechanics of the physical realm, the material realm, as you're a baby, you begin to instruct your subconscious mind to mirror or match the world that you're observing, you begin to energetically reconfigure yourself to be like your peers. This happens through the shifting of the assemblage point, which is something that we talk about heavily on the YouTube channel. And it's something that we'll talk about directly on this podcast, folks. We'll make a lengthy, lengthy entire episode just on the assemblage point. Because understanding the assemblage point's position is one of the most important things that you could ever understand in regards to mind control. True mind control, the epitome, the spearhead, the icing on the cake of mind control is the energetic configuration of the human being who is mind controlled. The assemblage point dictates the spin velocity of our auric field, our energy field, it dictates our energetic configuration, folks. And the assemblage point can actually shift positions. When it shifts positions, it can get locked into new positions. And where it gets locked dictates how you interpret reality. When you were a baby, your assemblage point was in a very free position. That's why you interacted with the material world in a much more spiritual manner. You saw things that your peers couldn't see. But as you develop in this world and your peers tell you that your imagination is basically just fake and you have to grow up, you start to lose the position of your assemblage point. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you start to reconfigure yourself energetically to match that energetic configuration of your peers. This happens by way of the assemblage point shifting. So some of these things, this, the, I think the introduction video, this video that I'm making for my podcast is going to be the most difficult because I'm kind of just trying to lay out a groundwork of what we're gonna talk about and give some little preliminary messages. So all this stuff, if it doesn't make sense to you folks, it will make sense if you familiarize yourself with the re reading materials that I suggest you read, and we'll talk about those in the future, and if you watch my YouTube channel. We're also gonna do guided meditations, folks. We're gonna do some guided meditations we're gonna talk about things like the full body relaxation exercise. We're gonna do all of this under this roof. I want this to be something that you can really utilize to your benefit. I'm sick of seeing so many things out here that just don't inspire people to change. I want this channel to help you change. I want it to be a launch pad, a platform, if you will. So the art of magic, sorcery, these are the things that we're going to talk about, some of them. But at the very top of the mountain, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to inspire people to do is to evolve spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And this is something that culture doesn't really inspire people to do. Culture wants you to think that once you're done growing up, once you reach about 30, you start aging rapidly. And if you don't have a job and a career, and if you didn't go to school by the time you're 18 to 29 or whatever, 30, then there's a good chance that you're going to fail. They want you to think that you're basically, your self-worth is determined through your career and your finances. This is a fucking mess world. I've said it once, folks. And I'll say it again, we live in hell. We, however, have the ability 
to reconfigure our energy field, change our minds and our body. We can evolve so that we become isolated units of heaven consciousness. This happens through the arousal and stimulation of Kundalini. This channel seeks to help you, the viewer, the listener. It's a, I don't want to call it a life vest of sorts, a life jacket, but it can be thought of as a spiritual first aid kit that you can use to help you while you walk here in the valley of death as you navigate the uncertain waters of the underworld as you walk the razor's edge so i think the first this is like an introduction after the introduction we'll do episode two or maybe we'll call it episode one since this is technically an introduction in episode one, I think we're going to lay down a firm foundation of diet and health so that the viewer, the listener, can uh, have access to something to do uh, physically. I think a lot of us, we should start our spiritual journey physically. We should start the process of personal self-evolution through nourishment, through upgrading the physical body. I view the body as a divine computer, a divine computer. I view the mind as divine software. By upgrading the hardware, the computer, we start to access more of the software, the mind. The mind and the body are intimately connected, folks, intimately. The mind and the body are intimately connected. So one thing that I've learned over the years, folks, uh, by through teaching, is that oftentimes people are physically oriented. People are physically oriented creatures. We're hands-on creatures. We haven't really developed in a world, we haven't really grown up in a world that inspires people to use their mind. And what I mean by that is, in school, you're, ne you're never really taught to visualize. You're never taught to observe your mind. You're never taught to question your own thoughts. You're never taught to do yoga, which is largely a mental exercise, contrary to what most people think. You're basically taught in school to remember a bunch of data so that you can get a career. It's a very physical thing. And yes, you're using your mind in school to remember things, but using your mind to remember things that is being forced into your mind is different than using your mind to get to know yourself. And that's what we're going to teach on this channel. But what I was getting at folks is that people are very hands on. And because of that, I like to suggest that everybody who's interested in evolving spiritually, mentally, emotionally, etc. I recommend that anyone who's initiating themselves on the path of the magnum opus, the development of the philosopher's stone, Anyone who wants to begin the great alchemical work, you should start physically because we are more oriented physically. Once you start upgrading your body, once you start getting those minerals into your system, once you start eliminating the wrong foods and putting the right foods into your diet, once you start repopulating your intestinal villi, your absorptive tissues by way of eliminating gluten, once you start to increase the amount of vitamin saturation in your body, once you give yourself the proper nutrients, the building blocks, your brain will naturally work better. Your organs, your tissues, your blood will become healthier, which the blood is the river of life. And as this happens, folks, as all of this happens, your mind will naturally start to expand through you getting physically healthier. Because as I mentioned earlier, the body and the mind are intimately connected. So as you increase the health of the physical body, your mind opens. And as your mind opens, it'll be much easier for you to grasp the importance of the inner work. It'll make it much easier for you to meditate even, or to do the full body relaxation exercise that we talk about, or the inner temple exercise, which we'll go over that in future episodes so 
Once the physical foundation is laid, you guys, everything else is going to work better. You've got to have the physical and the mental in a cohesive uh, union. And this is something that I've always taught. When the mind and the body, when there's that union established, it creates like a dynamic duo and every part of your life gets better. You're going to feel better. You're going to look better. You're going to generate positive emotions, which are going to lead to positive thoughts. And as positive thoughts naturally arise out of the positive emotions that are, you know, have been spawned, every little aspect of your life is going to change. Because, you know, for as much as I don't like the New Age movement, there is a lot of truth in the fact that your thoughts create your reality. However, the little secret that they never told you, folks, in all that law of attraction bullshit, was that it's not necessarily your thoughts that create your reality. It's the emotional foundation that you harbor that gives rise to your thoughts. That's what creates your reality. And what I mean by that is any jackass can sit in a chair all day and say, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Talk is cheap. Do you actually feel happy? Because if you actually felt happy, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you wouldn't have to tell yourself that you're happy. Does that make sense? When the emotions are slayed, when the wrong emotions are slayed, and you replace them with firm units of belief, positive beliefs. You can terraform your core beliefs, folks. Excuse me, that was kind of a word soup, but you can terraform your beliefs, change them, and naturally, if you integrate them into your emotional body, every single thought that comes from those beliefs all right, your emotions give rise to your thoughts, folks. That's what I'm saying. So by changing your emotions, you naturally change your thoughts. And instead of just sitting there telling yourself that you feel a certain way, you actually feel it. Feeling changes your reality, not just thinking. I hope that makes sense. That's crucial. It's absolutely crucial. So... Again, I hope this podcast can act as an expansion pack to the Sacred Serpent YouTube channel. And I hope that it can also act as a spiritual, magical sorcerer's first aid kit. A bag of magical goodies that you can use here in this perilous predatory world to increase your strength to inspire you, to motivate you, and to act as a calibration tool for your inner compass. There's so much garbage out here, folks. There's so much nonsense. There's so much superfluous bullshit and just people trying to sell you shit around every corner. So, I do indeed believe that if you listen to my words and you integrate a lot of the things that I say with an open heart, you'll be able to grasp a much more enhanced version of yourself and you'll be able to experience life in a much more expanded fashion which who the fuck wouldn't want to who the hell wouldn't want to enhance their clarity ladies and gentlemen who would not want to become a better version of themselves so Again, we use a very small percentage of our brain and bodily and mind power. And it's because of this that we're currently in the mess that we're in collectively. It's because we use a very limited range of our abilities that we get hoodwinked and tricked by people in establishments and etc. That's just the way it is. That's the way it's truly always been since we lost our way. 
And you know, you'll really begin to realize this when you start to upgrade your mind, when you start to do the thoughtlessness exercise that we talk about regularly, regularly on the YouTube channel, and we'll make an entire episode just about that exercise here on this podcast. When you start to unload your stress through the full body relaxation exercise, when you start to do the divine chalice exercise, when you start to build your astral body and strengthen your mental body, you'll begin to see how we use only a small fraction of our potential because you'll be actually exceeding your prior potential. You'll be growing if you do these protocols, if you work on your health and, your, and you do the mental work, if you practice the magic and the sorcery. You'll be able to metaphorically experience, or not metaphorically, you'll, ex you'll literally experience your development, your growth. And through that, you'll realize that, holy shit, I was in a stasis of growth, like a dam of water built up. We want movement. We want flow. What happens when a river gets dammed up, folks? Well, the sun hits the water. Algae starts to come. Not the good type of algae. Parasites start to spawn. Fish start to die. There's a lack of oxygen in the water. We want flow. We want the water to move down the rocks of the river and spin in different directions and create, you know, oxygen by way of making bubbles. We want an oxygenated river. We want movement. We don't want stasis. The system wants you to think that once you finish school, you're done. Now you go off and you pursue your career and make money and that's all you do. This is stupid. This is fucking stupid. And we're being lied to about a lot of things, folks. We're being lied to about our purpose here, who we are. We're absolutely being lied to about the mysteries of the earth and the human body. We're being lied to about our lifespan. We can accelerate. We can experience states of health, ladies and gentlemen, where the chakra systems are what are known as Shen centers in our body through the Kundalini moving through us can recharge our internal batteries indefinitely we can experience in my opinion physical immortality the secrets of human life the secrets of the human body the secrets of the earth and our interaction with the cosmos have been hidden for far too long let's peel the fucking onion back and let's tear apart this new world order scum system that wants to harvest human energy and use it as a fuel source let's destroy this archon system by becoming true living embodiments of the truth let's pick up the sword of the wounded healer and sharpen it we sharpen our sword through persistence by doing what's right in a world where it's so easy to do what's wrong let's build our spiritual armor the spiritual armor, ladies and gentlemen, is built through your action. Your spiritual armor will protect you here in hell. Spiritual armor isn't some breastplate hidden underneath some magical tree in some far lost forest in Transylvania. No, we've got to get away from the, <clears throat> the fantasy bo books. Excuse me. The true spiritual armor is created through your constant effort to become healthier, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. Your spiritual armor is forged through you forging your mind, increasing the strength of your mind, doing the inner exercises, doing the inner work, practicing the sorcery, shifting the assemblage point, and doing your magical work. Keeping your magical diary, becoming lucid in dreams, doing all of these things. This is how we build ourselves up, folks. This is how we access development. Development creates is development is a byproduct of growth. Growth is how you build the spiritual armor. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. So <laughs> again, you guys, what a beautiful existence. What a beautiful opportunity that we have. We are alive and breathing what a gift if we could just pull our heads out of our ass if we could get a more firm understanding about just how like 
how much of a special opportunity this is that we have here to be alive, to be a human. We can do so much. There are no limitations. If someone tells you you can't fly, you don't just believe it. And I know that may sound crazy, what I just said, but I'm still not fucking convinced that I can't fly, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still not convinced that I can't breathe underwater after what I've seen, what I've fucking experienced, what I've gone through, the revelations I've had, the states of gnosis I'm, I've entered. I'm not convinced that the human body and mind has any limits. I am, however, firmly convinced that our development has a lot to do with our inability to do the things that we're being told are impossible. How we were programmed when we were younger. How our subconscious mind has been filled full of very rigid beliefs that keep us from being able to achieve these things. Our subconscious mind is everything. And we're going to go over that on this podcast. We've already gone over it extensively on the YouTube channel, but there's so much more to say. I'm not, I don't believe any expert. I don't believe much ladies and gentlemen, because what I've learned is that beliefs are dangerous. Anytime you just accept a belief without understanding why you believe it, that's fucking dangerous. That's more poisonous than any toxic substance because poisoning the mind, that, that is a dangerous thing, folks. Belief is very dangerous. Because belief, culturally accepted beliefs that are just accepted without questioning them, get handed down generationally. And before you know it, we have generation after generation of people that are inculcated with nonsense that is enslaving them. And that's why I said that belief can be more dangerous than any poison physically. <clears throat> that's meant to be taken with a grain of salt. There's a metaphoric meaning behind why I said that. It's because these fucking beliefs are handed down generationally. And if they keep getting handed down, if our parents, if we as the children grow up to be adults and then hand the bullshit that we've developed or absorbed in our, if we hand down the false belief to our children, they will grow up to be adults and hand it down to their children. And before you know it, we might get so lost in negative false beliefs that we we're, we're absolutely slaves. Enslavement happens in the mind first and foremost, folks. So again, I was told once a long time ago that you can't fly. That's impossible. When I was younger, I wanted to fly. I used to practice. I used to try jumping. I swear to Christ. I used to stand out front and try to hop so that hopefully I could jump onto the roof of my house. And as I continued to try, my lack of success began to bear on me a little bit. And before you knew it, I knew it, I began to believe my peers. You can't do this. You can't do that. You have to go to school. You have to learn a trade. Otherwise you'll amount to nothing. You don't want to end up homeless. All of this negativity that we're exposed to as children is fucking disgusting. But you know what? Something in the back of my mind, although I accepted my peers' beliefs to a large extent, I never truly believed them completely. So you know what ended up happening is I, I began to limit myself a little bit as I got older. And what I mean by that is I still believed that I could do things that I was being told were impossible. But I wanted to change things up and do and try to approach things from a little, a, a slightly more rational foundation. So instead of standing outside and trying to jump and fly as an adult, as crazy as that may sound, I don't care if you have, a, I don't care if you judge me for that. But as crazy as that sounds, instead of doing that, I said, you know what? I've been reading a lot about lucid dreams. I'm going to try to become lucid in my dream. In, one, in my dreams. And if I become lucid in my dreams, I'll try to fly in my dreams. How about that? 
So I began to seek becoming lucid in dreams. And lucid dreams are not an easy thing to obtain. And a lot of people who tell me that they're having lucid dreams are not having lucid dreams. A lucid dream, folks, is when you wake up in the dream and realize you're in a dream. You can feel your actual physical body, but you're in the dream. You can feel your physical body asleep. And there's a connection between your spirit and your physical body when you become lucid. You're aware that you're dreaming. Now, what ends up happening is usually when this happens, it's so exciting that you that you just wake up physically. But a lucid dream is when you wake up in a dream and realize that you're dreaming and now you can do whatever you want. Lucid dreaming is one of the most intoxicatingly beautiful things that you'll ever experience. And everybody listening to this, if you've never had an authentic, full-blown lucid dream, you should seek them. Because it will change your life forever. It will shift your assemblage point, folks. This is one of the quickest and easiest ways to shift the assemblage point without the usage of sorcery in sacraments, which can be exceptionally dangerous. However, getting back on track, as a late teenager... I still felt like I was being lied to about what we can and can't do as humans. I really, even when I was going through school, knew it was bullshit, but I used it to my benefit. I wanted to learn some reading and writing skills, and I did. I'm not completely against school, but as a late teenager, you guys, I said, you know what? I'm going to try, instead of trying to learn how to fly or breathe underwater, I'm going to try something that's probably a little bit more easily obtainable. Let's start with kindergarten before we move to college, that kind of thing. So eventually I became lucid in a dream. I remember it vividly because it's impossible to forget a lucid dream. And in my lucid dream, I flew. It was the most liberating thing I've ever done, or one of them. I've experienced a lot of things that I was told at a young age were impossible. And it's become a large foundation of why I teach that you don't have limitations, folks. Our mind has limitations by way of our subconscious mind being put in to a negative belief set of standards, if you will. And our assemblage point has been shifted into a non-salubrious position where we only interact, interact with a very small percentage of the electromagnetic spectrum, which causes us by default to only be able to experience a small percentage of our power. <clears throat> If we shift the assemblage point and we slay the non-essential parts of ourselves and rebuild our subconscious mind through magic and rebuild ourselves energetically through sorcery, those things that you were told were impossible start feeling very real, tangible, obtainable, if you will. So when I experienced that lucid dream, I eventually got so excited in the dream that I woke up. And when I woke up, I had the most almost evil smile on my face because I knew at that point that, okay, you know, there's, there's, there's much more to life going on here. There like the dream realm is a real realm. Ladies and gentlemen, I flew in that fucking realm. What you'll learn through lucidity and shifting the assemblage point by what, what you'll learn through your magic and your sorcery folks, <clears throat> excuse me, is that how would I say this? You will learn through your continued effort that you're basically the byproduct of a world that put a stasis in your development. Once you realize this firmly, and once you have the proper tools to start developing, things will take off for you. Your spiritual journey will begin. But, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, the dream realm is a real realm. However, we live non-authentic lives where we're stressed all the time. We have all this bullshit in our subconscious mind. We have all this bullshit in what I call the layers of the mind behind the front of the mind. There's a curtain dividing the two. We've talked about that extensively on the YouTube channel. But because of all this stuff that happens unconsciously to us, because we only use a small, we use what I like to call the front of the mind. Through magic and sorcery, we pull the curtain back and see what's behind the front of the mind. But until then, you're in the front of your fucking mind. And in the front of your mind, ladies and gentlemen, when you go to sleep, 
you bring into your sleep, all the stress and the worries and all the bullshit of the mundane world. <clears throat> and you don't experience lucidity when you sleep now because you carried in to your dream realm all of the worries of the day and all this nonsense. So you experience a hectic mirage, if you will, a kaleidoscope type chaos visual experience when you sleep where you're literally dreaming about your worries. You're not actually experiencing the dream realm. So the dream realm is a real realm. You just don't know that because you're not in it because you're not lucid. I hope that makes sense. When I flew that night, I flew. I was just flying in a different dimension. That first initial lucid dream led to a sequence of other lucid dreams that led me to certain things in the physical realm. The dream realm was intimately connected to the physical realm. In fact, the Toltecs believe that the dream realm is more important than the physical realm. And that the physical realm is basically just like a reflection of the dream realm. See, they've got us stuck in the physical realm and disconnected from the dream realm. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. There's so much we can talk about. But we learn to regard this dimension as like the only thing. And you get one chance here. You get one chance to get through this alive. And then after that, everything's over. And it's all this hopelessness and all this stupid bullshit. It makes me sick. So I hope that this podcast and my channel can be like a fucking spiritual vaccine, an astral vaccine that you can push into your mental body and your astral body and cleanse some of that nasty bullshit out of your system, out of your subconscious mind, the poison that is destroying the youth, the poison that was injected into your parents and their parents and their parents' parents that turned them into these hard shells. It shut them off from their minds. Let's get rid of this stuff. Let's break these generational curses, folks. Let's break these generational curses. Let's start practicing the proper yoga, the yoga of Frank Rudolph Young. Start doing the exercises that we talk about on this channel. Do the inner temple exercise. All of this stuff, if you're hearing about it first on my podcast... It's all available on my YouTube channel. There are over 700 videos on my channel. The, ch the channel is a cohesive map that you can use. So again, you guys, stretch the body, stretch, the, open those vertebral openings through yoga. Otherwise, you're not going to have proper communication between your head, which is the kingdom of God, to the rest of the holy land, which is your body. You're not going to be able to receive images and nerve impulses properly from your body and have them sent to the head. If your vertebral openings are closed off, are restricted, you got to start doing the exercise known as the Virtodiv and do the, and do the five or the animal exercises, the five animal or Taoist animal exercises. Where is my Frank Rudolph Young book here, folks? Let me grab it. This book that I'm holding right now. It's called Yoga for Men Only by Frank Rudolph Young. It's a little outdated. The way it's written kind of bugs me at times because it's constantly giving examples of what people achieve through the yoga. I'd rather just have a hands-on system of how to do something. But these books, Frank Rudolph's books, Frank Rudolph Young, his book Yoga for Men Only is an excellent starting point for men and women alike. I don't know why he called it yoga for men only. It's kind of maybe because it's like written in kind of a manly way. I don't, I don't really, I still don't get why he called it this because women can do this as well. Um, his book, Yoga Secrets for Extra, Extraordinary Health and Long Life is great. His book, Psychastra, all his books on magic. These are some of the books that we're going to talk about on this podcast. And these are some of the books that we've talked about uh, on the YouTube channel, as well as some of Philip Cooper's books and some others, Carlos Castaneda's books. But again, you guys, I, I try to, uh, I can't, I don't have the time or the verbal ability to be able to explain 
everything in great detail. And what I mean by that, you may be wondering what I mean by that is, you know, some of these books, I, I can't explain to you what everything in the book on these videos. There's, there's homework on this channel. There's going to be homework on this podcast. You've got to branch off. You've got to use this and, and do something unique with it. If you like my work, get some of these books. I actually have an extra copy of Frank Rudolph Young's book, Yoga for Men Only. They're a little expensive because they're old and a little not necessarily hard to find, but they're not common. You can go to sacredhealingtools.com and go to the contact tab and contact me and inquire about obtaining my extra copy if you're interested. Or if you do a little bit of digging, you can find these books, more, most of them in PDF form. So I, I personally, if I find a book in PDF form that I like, I'll buy it regardless of the price. I collect rare books. I always have, and it's something that's very close to my heart. I really enjoy collecting rare books, especially occult books. But again, you guys, once you start to, uh, once you have experiences that allow you to experience things that you're being told aren't possible, you begin to question everything else. It's kind of like uh, uh, Trinity tells Morpheus or Neo in the first Matrix film. It's the question that drives us, folks. We've got to question everything. Through questioning, we have the potential to acquire answers. And through answers that we can test on the scales, we can potentially develop wisdom. And that's a subject that we've gone over in the past extensively, so I'm not going to be repetitive. But... Again, you guys, for most people, the problem is that they never seek an experience that shifts the assemblage point far enough to the point where they begin to question everything else in life. And that's why sorcery can be so beneficial. Sorcery is the art of shifting the assemblage point. It's much different than magic. Through shifting the assemblage point, your consciousness will interact with more of the electromagnetic spectrum. And once that happens, you'll, be, you'll begin to grasp things that you previously could not. You see, your imprisonment of your consciousness, that's all taking place in your current assemblage point position, where you only interact with a very small, minute fragment, the visible light spectrum on the electromagnetic spectrum for the most part. When you shift the assemblage point, you start to, your consciousness, everything interacts with the electromagnetic spectrum on a deeper level and you go, wait a minute. Ah, you're telling me something that you're, you, 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 you experts and you scientists and all you doctors are saying things, you're perpetuating things that although they sound good to the uninitiated masses, I've experienced more of the, uh, my mind's potential. And I know that you're not telling me the truth. You begin to not only believe or have faith that there's more to life, but you begin to know it. And the two are drastically different folks. Anyone can think, anybody can think that there's more to life and have faith that there's more out there. There's extraterrestrials out there. And oh, I have faith that's God real, yada, yada, yada. By putting yourselves into states of non-ordinary reality through the proper practicing of sorcery and by practicing your magic, you put yourself into the state of mind where you download mystic revelation to the point where you know that there's more to life. You don't just think there's more to life. You actually know it now. Imagine that. Knowing and having faith are completely different because knowing something is based on having a foundation of belief, folks. The two are drastically different. Not even similar. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to start wrapping this one up. I'm about to take my daily dose of vitamin C powder, drink some water, go on a run here later, ground myself, do some jump rope. We've got to be doing the inner work and the physical work, folks. The physical work is just important as the inner work, and the inner work is just important as the physical work. So, again, you guys, thank you for listening this far, if you've, if you've made it this far. Where this was just an introduction. On the following episode, we're going to pick topics. Or on the next episode. 
and we're going to focus directly on that topic. That's how this is going to work. And sure, like a river that branches off into separate streams, we'll talk about various subjects on these upcoming videos, not just the core subject, but we'll really focus on core subjects. And if there's something that you want to hear me talk about, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section, folks, of this video. So I want to wrap this one up by saying that I hope that you guys will tune in to future episodes. I want to wrap this one up by saying that I hope that you'll do something positive for your health today, whether that be getting a water distiller or taking down some lemon water, a beautiful, powerful antioxidant tonic. Just do something, you guys. Do something to propel yourself out of the mire that you're in. Human beings and human consciousness, it's very easy for us to be put onto loops, kind of like a rat on a rat wheel. It might think it's running somewhere, but it's actually stationary. We don't want to be on a stationary loop. We want to be on a loop that moves us somewhere, that creates friction so that the rubber can meet the road so that we can move forward, folks. I hope that makes sense. Got a group of people sitting in a weird white van out front, just watching them while I talk to you guys. So, anyways, you guys, I love you all. I would highly suggest picking up a copy of The Teachings of Don Juan by Carlos Castaneda. That is an excellent book. We're going to have homework on this channel. We're going to have recommended exercises or on this podcast. So start off, you know, you can go on to Scribd or Scribd.com and get a one month trial. And if you cancel the trial before the 30 days is up, you don't get charged the $9.99 a month to keep the subscription. And that's actually really cheap, $9.99 a month. You can get every single Castaneda audiobook for 30 days for free and then 10 months after. These books are incredibly expensive to buy on their own. So to have access to all of them under one roof for $9.99 a month is a pretty incredible thing. S-C-R-I-B-D.com. I don't get any money for recommending that. I just, uh, when I find something that works well for me, I like to promote it and spread it to you, the viewer, the subscriber. Um, you know, Audible is good as well, but it's nowhere near as good as Scribd. Nowhere near as good as Scribd, and it's way too expensive. Uh, physical copies of the books are obtainable as well for very cheap. The Teachings of Don Juan was mass produced. I think I have a copy of it in a digital library that I put together for my patrons on my Patreon website. So I have, I think, over 50 rare books. Not necessarily rare. There's a handful of very rare books on my online library that you can access as a Patreon, uh, patron on my Patreon website. I think The Teachings of Don Juan is on there and you can access that online library for $5 a month and you can also access hundreds of videos that you cannot find on my YouTube channel. So if you've been on the fence about joining my Patreon page, you should do it because there's a lot of content on there. It's $5 a month. It's basically like buying me a cup of coffee every month and you can cancel your subscription anytime. So um, The Teachings of Don Juan is a great place to start. I think that was Castaneda's first book. Um, and that will familiarize you with sorcery and what it is, which, you know, sorcery, the best definition is the exact definition that Don Juan gives Carlos throughout his books. And that is that uh, sorcery is the art of entering into non-ordinary states of reality. By doing this, we shift the assemblage point and access more of the electromagnetic spectrum. Through this, we experience more of our mind and our body's power and our uh, our mind's connection to nature. The, sh the shifting of the assemblage point is how we begin to reconfigure our energetic configuration and shatter the human slave configuration on an energetic level. When you st enter into non-ordinary states of reality, you learn more about your mind and yourself and you start to see how that you're like an antenna that was designed to interact with the electromagnetic fields of trees and nature and animals and all of the, the mineral kingdom, everything. This is a really special opportunity that we all have here, folks. It's called life. 
That that should be enough to take you out of your depression. If you're in depression or if you're anxious, you're alive. You're living. And here on this channel, here on this podcast, the channel especially because there's so much content. There's all sorts of protocols to make yourself feel better or to increase your confidence or to become healthier. You know, don't get dragged down by an anchor. Don't get dragged by, down by an anchor or phantoms of the past or poisoned memories. You guys, you got to hit the reset button. You've got to be willing to defragment your C drive, metaphorically speaking. You can't make, you cannot make progress if you have an attachment to the things that are keeping you from experiencing progress. That's such an important thing. What I just said, if you really firmly grasp that simple statement, you can go very far with it. We cannot experience progress if we're not willing to let go of the anchor, keeping us from experiencing progress. You got to let that anchor go. And a lot of people are afraid to because they've learned to identify with reality and themselves through, through the anchor. People learn to enjoy being victims. It's called Stockholm syndrome. People learn to enjoy being anchored folks. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. And the more you learn about your own self, the more you learn about your own mind, the more you'll realize that there's a lot of truth to this. I don't just say things via pulling them out of my ass. I talk to you, the viewer, the listener about things that I've experienced directly, energetic truths. I know that the mind loves feeling sorry for itself based on how it's been programmed. I know how we love enjoying being anchored down because I've been there. I've deleted that part of myself. You see, I don't just point my fingers at people when I point my finger at someone, I'm usually pointing three back at myself. I can actually bend my thumb far enough back so that it's in. I can actually point four fingers back at myself. To some extent, when I'm when I'm passionate or when it sounds like I'm being angry with a viewer, even though I'm not being angry with a viewer, I'm actually just venting about myself because I've been there and I'm still going through the trials and the tribulations and the changes. So... Again, guys, we're going to wrap this one up. Short episode, preliminary extra, uh, episode. Nutrients in the inner work. I would, I would suggest a strong foundation of, of nutrition. Get off the gluten, get my full, or get my Life Force Diet Mastery System, which is available for instant download at www.sacredhealingtools.com. It's a three and a half hour diet course. Teaches you exactly what to eat and what not to eat. That diet system that I put together will allow your skin to glow. It'll allow you to unplug from the oxidative stress and damage that you're doing to yourself by living on a standard American diet. My diet system will allow your small intestine to repopulate its intestinal villi that you've destroyed by eating gluten your whole life. No wonder you don't feel good. You can't absorb anything because you're eating gluten. So again, you guys, we've, there's a lot of stuff available at your fingertips if you use my channel. If you use the internet intelligently, the internet can be used for great things. It can also be used to really destroy yourself. But, you know, a solid foundation of nutrition starts by removing the wrong things from your diet. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to absorb everything. So even if you don't want to buy my course, get off of vegetable oils and get off of gluten. Save them for special occasions. Get off the syrups, the corn syrups, and the you know the vegetable uh, derivatives, the vegetable oil derivatives. Excuse me, excuse me, if I can speak today. You're gonna want to also, as you're getting off of the vegetable oils and the gluten, you're going to want to saturate yourself with potent antioxidants and high ORAC foods. So vitamin C is one of the cheapest. It's a cheap antioxidant. You can buy it for less than $20 a pound. I buy it in eight ounce tubs, take about one to three grams or more a day. This is gonna help you remove the oxidative stress. It's gonna help you with your cholesterol, folks. It's gonna help lower your blood pressure. It's also gonna help stimulate the evacuation of years worth of waste that's stuck in your colon, but the powder is the only thing that does this. 
Vitamin C capsules and tablets do not work as well, especially the tablets that have been pressed into hard bricks. They don't dissolve properly in your, properly in your gut. So wrapping up the introduction to the Serpent's Tongue podcast, I love you all. I look forward to hearing from you and may peace be with you.